Today on Things Candy Makes, I'm going to show you how to make this on Denter Finder and engrave this. Hi, I'm Max. Welcome to Things Katie Makes. What are we going to make today, Max? This. How are we going to do it? You show them how to make it on Center Finder, and then you're going to engrave it and show them how to do it. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. All right, today we are going to do exactly what Max said, and we are going to use the Center Finder in Lightburn to center a design on a circular object. What's great about this is it is super simple to do. So Max, who is almost 10, could do this in two seconds because it tells you exactly how to do it. You will find that this is one thing you'll want to use over and over for something that you do not want to make a jig for. If you have an item that you're just going to use once or you just want to save time. The center finder is useful for any circular item and I'm going to show you how to use it. I'm also going to talk to you today about how I got the results that I wanted on this board because it was a little more challenging than I expected. There are some tips and tricks that I can give you to make you more confident in starting with a material that you don't have a lot of room for error. So we're going to talk about that today. If that's interesting to you, stick around. If you're anything like me, you like to go out and just see what's available at your local craft stores. Home Goods is one of my favorite places to pop into. And I don't always find the same material there over and over. So I might want to try something out don't want to invest in something in bulk and maybe I just want to do a one-off design. Well I found that round at Hobby Lobby and I really just wanted to put something cool on it and wanted to give it a go. But I didn't want to try to make a jig. It's really large and I have a Nova 24 so cutting a jig for this might have been complicated for me. And then I remembered that I had seen a center finder tool on Lightburn's website. So I wanted to check it out. And it turns out it's really, really simple to use. So I'm gonna show you that quickly in Lightburn and then I'll share with you some of the tips that I have for engraving something like this where you can't test it out multiple times. Let's go check out that circle finder in Lightburn. So we go to laser tools, center finder, and you'll see it's telling us to move the laser head to a point on the outside of the circle to set the first circle point. When I go over to the laser, the first thing I'm gonna do is adjust the speed that my laser head is moving at when it's traveling. So right now it's at 21 millimeters per second. That's pretty slow, but I like it to go slow for these precise measurements. So I've changed it to 31 millimeters per second before going to start driving that laser head over. Now we will drive it to a corner or an edge, and we will do our best to get it slightly on and slightly off of the edge. So we'll move it in really short bursts just to get it right there to the edge and make sure that it is slightly on and slightly off before we go set that first point. That looks great. So we'll head back over to light burn and we will set that as our first point. You need to do this step in light burn for each point. So click that and now it will tell us to set our second point. So we will head back over to the laser and we will drive the laser head over to make the bottom point of our triangle on the bottom of this cutting board. Again, we are aiming to get a triangle in three points to get this circle. You'll see me struggle a little bit here to get this exactly where I want. I drive it back and forth a few times before I get it exactly on that edge. So maybe that 21 millimeters per second would have helped me out here. You'll find that if you aren't doing a lot of this precise movement, you may want it around 100 to 200 millimeters per second. But when you want to be really precise, you definitely want to be under 100 millimeters per second. So look at that. That looks pretty good right there. So we're ready to go set that as our second point. Now we'll move on to our third point and our last one. So we're going to drive up and you can see that 31 millimeters per second travels quite slowly when it's going across the board. So if you're just moving the head not to get precise origin points, you're going to want to speed that up. I consistently am changing that speed while I'm using the laser a few different times uh, during every job. All right, we're almost there. Great. Love that right on the edge. So we are ready to set that as our third point. Next, we'll jog to the, cent the center of the circle and we'll add a guide for the circle to the project, which will show up in light burn. So once you hit that center in the laser, you need to go over and set the origin on the laser. Otherwise, you will have to do this whole piece again and you don't want to do that. 
Now you'll see we have the guide, so we need to add our image to it. I'm going to shift that image to 90 degrees, and then I will go ahead and use the centering tools to get that placed where I want within my guide. So I will select both the vertical center and the horizontal center. And I don't love exactly where that got placed, so I'm going to move it down a little bit manually before I adjust the engraving settings. Now we need to get those engraving settings. So I'm going to go to the layer. I'm going to move this to a fill layer that I have predetermined. And I am going to go look at the settings that are provided from Thunder Laser as a starting point for my 60 watt laser. And I'm going to find a material that I think is similar enough as a starting point. So looking through the materials for engraving with a standard two inch head, I think that cherry wood is probably my best bet. So I will go back to light burn and I will set that to 500 speed, 20 power, 15 min power with that 0.08 line interval. And that's ready to go. We want to make sure that we set our job origin before we send this to center since that's where your origin is on your material. be really challenging about picking up a unique material at a local store or from a local craftsman or online is that you might not have the same variety over and over for you to use one to test and one to actually engrave your design on. One thing that I found while I was working on this design and I think could work for you, you can always make a design darker and deeper, but you can never undo that once you've gotten started. So starting with lighter, power and higher speed, you can see if you like those results. And if not, you can stop your job or you can let it finish out and then go over it again. So on my example, I started out the recommended settings from the 60 watt uh, provided information from Thunder. And what I found was that because of this light color, this light color here on that light color, I wasn't getting any good dark engraving. So I stopped the job a little way through and then changed my power settings a few different times. What I ended up with was a very low speed and still kind of a low power. So I didn't need to increase the power as I went through that low speed. And what I read online was that's because then that allows that material to have a little more time to burn rather than just to etch it off. What I did find in my example is that I engraved this part quite a bit more because my design started moving from here. And so this side is quite a bit deeper of an engraving than this side. It wouldn't be noticeable if I didn't know it was there, but if you are going to test out doing multiple passes, you may wanna let the job run all the way through. This job is a pretty large job and on my Nova 24, it took about 25 minutes at 500 speed and between 35 and 40 at that lower speed, but still low power. So just keep that in mind as you're doing those tests. Make sure you have enough time to run the full job if you want before uh, going in again. If you're looking for a nice, deep, dark engrave, you are gonna probably want to try to go with a lower speed and stay with that lower power rather than increasing your power and maintaining your speed so that you get that material to burn and to darken a little bit more. This also allows you the flexibility to test a few more things because I now know that I can really just kind of run that lighter power and then go over it multiple times till I get the look that I want. I'm a little more inclined to try a few things on a newer material without fear of ruining it. That is something I was always worried about when I was first starting out with my Glowforge was what if I ruined this material that someone gave me or that I spent a lot of money on? Cutting boards, uh, real wood are not inexpensive. So I didn't want to make those mistakes and not be able to recover from those. Start with that lower power, higher speed, and then take away some speed to get those darker results. You may find that you really like the lighter result on the wood that you've chosen. Every wood reacts differently, particularly different hardwoods. You wouldn't wanna do this method necessarily on, some, on a plywood because you might get into that core instead of and go through the veneer on the top so just make sure that you're being really mindful of what kind of material you're working with if you're working with a hardwood a cutting board is a great example you have a lot of layers to work with so doing multiple passes isn't going to hurt you 
So that's it. This is a really simple method to find the center of an item, especially if you're only going to do it one time and you don't need to have a perfect circle. If I was going to do a perfect circle design on top of a circle, I might make a jig. But for something that I'm really just trying to get centered on an item, I think this works more than adequately. And it can really save you a lot of time versus having to make that jig every time. If this was useful to you, it would be great if you left me a like so that I know what kind of content you're enjoying. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, you should. I am working on all sorts of great content for 2023. I'm really excited to keep bringing you projects and tips and tricks that you can use in your lasers. If you're looking for a supported group of like-minded laser owners, in the description below you'll find a link to the Facebook group that I run with Jacqueline Kyle from The Fable Tree and John Kaipoff called Laser Maker School. And we talk about all different things laser related from designing files to running businesses. So we would love to have you there. If you're looking for tips and tricks straight to your inbox, You'll want to sign up for my newsletter, which you can also find the links for below. If you'd like to see more of Max, let me know by leaving me a comment. Thanks, that's it for now. We'll see you next time.